In this video, I'll be going over the solution to the problem coronavirus from Code Chef February lunchtime 2020. Let's look at a sample. So we're given a rooted tree and we need to choose the minimal, minimum, minimum number of cities to give medicine to. And if we give this medicine to people in the city, then the city and all cities in its subtree such that their distance from the given uh, city is at most k become cured. So, for example, if I give medicine to people in city 4, then city 5 and city 6 will also be cured and if, if k is equal to 1 because uh, all uh, cities in its subtree with distance at most one, which is and five and six have distance at most one, so they will also be cured. And if we give medicine to city one, then we will cure cities two, three, and four as well. Okay, so for k equals to one, we have to give medicine to these two cities. So for the answer for k equals to 1 is 2. And then for 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, we only have to give medicine to city 1 in order for all cities to be cured. So the answer for the rest of k is 1. So, and the total answer, for the total answer, we just sum everything up and we get 7. So this, this will be the answer for this test case. So first, we should consider how we can find the answer for a specific k. And the first observation is that we can use the following greedy solution, which is pretty simple. So while there's a city which is not cured yet, um, we will find the deepest such uncured city and we'll call it U. And then we'll give medicine to the kth ancestor of U. And this will basically cure U. And you might ask, um, and in order to cure U, we must give medicine to an ancestor of U, maybe the first or the second or all the way up to K. But then in fact, it's optimal to give it to the kth ancestor. So in this case, if k is equal to 3, and we only give it to the second ancestor, then we only cure these nodes. But if we give it to the third ancestor, then we cure even more nodes. So this is why it's better to give medicine to the kth ancestor. And it's important to note that u has to be the deepest node in order for this to be true. In, so in, or, in order for uh, the kth ancestor to be optimal. And observation uh, two is that the answer for given k is O of n divided by k. And this is because uh, every time we give medicine to the city, except for maybe the root node, we cure at least k plus one cities, since uh, the medicine can reach cities with distance k. This also means that the sum over all answers is O of n log n. And we can show this with calculus. And this is pretty standard as well. And if we can somehow perform each greedy step in O of log n time, then our total time complexity will be O of log squared n. So let's look at our greedy algorithm again. First, we can find the kth ancestor of u uh, pretty easily because 
of we can find the kth ancestor of any node in log n time using binary lifting. And if you don't know what binary lifting is, I'll include a link explaining it in the description of this video. And the two things we need to know how to do is we need to be able to find the deepest city efficiently. And when we give medicine to city U, uh, we should set all cities in subtree of U to cured. So we need to do this efficiently as well. Since we have subtree uh, queries and updates, we should consider using a DFS pre-order traversal with a segment tree. And I will include a link in the description if you are unfamiliar with using the DFS pre-order traversal technique uh, for subtree queries. And then for the deepest city, that basically corresponds to a range maximum query if we consider the depths of the nodes. And then <clears throat> to set all cities in the subtree to be cured, that is just a range set query. <clears throat> and these two operations, we can do them efficiently in log n time with a segment tree. So let's look at my code. Okay, so first we input the graph and then after we input the graph, I have a DFS to calculate the basic information that we need for the algorithm. So in the DFS function, the first thing I do is I calculate the ancestor table for in order to do the binary lifting. And then we do an update on our segment tree. And this function, update1, basically sets a single value um, to x. So we set the value to the depth of the node and the index of the node. And after we do this update, we calculate the start range of the PFS traversal for the subtree and the end of the range for the for the subtree in the pre-order traversal. And then here's uh, my greedy algorithm. So for each k, I run the greedy algorithm as described earlier. So each time this inner loop runs, I add one to the answer. So what I do is first I find the deepest node. So I query the root node of my segment tree to find the node with the maximum depth. And then if and u of 1, it basically gives me the index of the node. And then if u of 1 is negative, then that means that there are no nodes left. So I should just uh, stop. And otherwise, I use binary lifting to find the kth ancestor of u of 1. And then I cover the entire, I cure the entire subtree of u of 1. So, and the corresponding range for the subtree is ds of u of 1 to de of u of 1 minus 1. And this function update 2, it basically sets a range equal to um, this, equal to uh, 0, uh, equal to a node with a node with index negative 1, which basically clears the node. And then after uh, this algorithm finishes, we need to restore the changes to the segment tree. So what you can do is you can use a persistent segment tree, but um, if you don't know that yet, that's okay, because what you can do is every time we change the segment tree and update to this function, every time before we do a change, we'll store the original value in the segment tree and, uh, and we'll put it into a vector which stores all of the changes. 
And then after the algorithm, we basically start from the back of the vector and restore the changes that we made to the segment tree. And yeah, this is pretty much it. And if this video was helpful, then feel free to like and subscribe.